I need to do it, man. Just be gentle with yourself. And I got to the point in my life, bro, where I would, I would walk down the street and I was battling this because I thought, okay, what's the point of living? I'm just here, I'm an accident, I'm gonna die. Why should I live? Why should I wake up and brush my teeth? So the biggest bullet is this. Yeah. Even if the problem of evil exists, it doesn't mean there is no God. But it means that the God is not merciful as yeah, we but, keep claiming. But you were de- trying to deny God based on the problem of evil. So at least acknowledge it doesn't deny God's existence. It's not an argument against God's existence. Okay, interesting. So let's come through the door first, right? Interesting. The, the this in my files I keep files on them guys and welcome to Declassified Assalamu alaikum Zishan Wa alaikum assalam bro I have brother <coughs> how should we address you? <laughs> Just with my name bro Your Highness No no no, no, no. Oh. Uh, Imran's fine Imran's yeah, fine yeah Imran's fine Okay so we've got brother Iqbal who uh, was, were you from? I was expecting you, but not this soon, bro. <laughs> started early. Started early. May Allah help me. I uh, mean, Imran, Imran. Uh, what was it? You're making my throat dry, man. <laughs> I don't feel like this one of my speaker's corner. I've not felt like this in, in years. SubhanAllah. Inshallah. Uh, this will get worse. <laughs> so, bro, welcome to Declassified, bro. What do you think of the setup? I actually love your backdrop. It's average, isn't it? Well, no, it's, it's it's above average in thought. Alhamdulillah. Maybe average from a material perspective, but it's above average in thought. It's and all, and thoughts. It's, thought. all, it's all materialism, bro. Yep. It's all going to perish. We're all going to die. Higher power, no higher power, bro. What's going on? There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the world, bro. There's a lot going on with you right now. So That's, but I, you know what? I got, I got the big one. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about this podcast. In fact, this is the first time I'm meeting the brother Imran, uh, sorry, Iqbal. Uh, first time in real life. Yeah, I've seen him old school back in the days. Yeah, with uh, Saba and uh, Saba. <laughs> who's, who's Saba, bro? The, you know the, the the evolution guy from Aero. Sabur. So, <laughs> Sabur. Who's, who's this bloke? What's his name? What's your name, uh, mate? Uh, Sabur. Saba. Uh, you, you you called me like five minutes ago. I called you five minutes ago, Saba. Let's start this show. All right, Saba. I I remember, and I'm I, I saved this for camera, bro. Yeah. And I'm not exaggerating. I I saw one of your debates, bro. And I said, you know what? When I see this guy, it's when you had long hair. Yeah. I was like, when I see this guy, I need to kiss him on his forehead. Go ahead, bro. I'm not gonna stop you. It's your podcast, dude. bro. Honestly, I need to do it, man. Yeah, just be gentle, soft. I didn't think I would actually end up doing it. You got tissue. But <laughs> I do. I feel but some moisture on my, <laughs> and above, above, <laughs> above my eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not sweat, bro, by any chance. I know that, know that for sure. It could sure. be saliva or it could be from the bottled water. We'll Let's open it from, from the bottle. <laughs> bro, honestly, in those days, in fact, even in these days, sometimes yeah. the atheists, you know, God bless them and guide them. I mean, but sometimes they really throw you off balance. Yeah. And sometimes with our daily lives, like we're going work and we're coming home with family keeps us busy with bad diets and everything. We, yeah. you know, we're talking about diets and stuff. We don't have time to look into all these arguments yeah. and mashallah, uh, you guys are doing your thing and sometimes when you say these arguments people like me were like yo yo that's serious right there and mashallah some of the arguments you guys were making and the thing is you might not be as popular as some of the other speakers but you guys have been on the scene a long time yes. how many years is it I like feel old when you think one about year it. or no, uh, one and a half years no it's a bit longer than that i think it's been about Half a year, five and a half months, more like I think. No, about five, six years, I think. Yeah, five, five six, six years. years. Mohsin's just given me a little oh. six, six fingers, six years. Six fingers. Yeah, six years. Man, it. Six years. Yeah, it, it's been an up and down six years. Yeah, and I was saying to you earlier, you know, consistency is a big thing, which mashallah you've maintained on your. Uh, on your journey on social media, uh, may Allah accept it and, and increase you. Um, Amen. And uh, for most of us, it's not been the same case, but it's it's the case of you know you learn from your mistakes, and inshallah is a comeback. 
Yeah, you clearly haven't. There is a comeback oh, in okay. plan, inshallah. Yeah. And inshallah it's coming. Inshallah, it's not here if, yet. If, though, if, if, if if I think this may be a big roadblock, this particular podcast in in that, <laughs> happen, in that, in that happening. But I'll make sure of that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if you if you did. I'll I'll put your uh, I'll put your links in the description. The brothers that you know, uh, you check out your one one video. Uh, Per well, year. at least you say one video, not like the it, it was the, the case with the, was with the Musa the other day. <laughs> <laughs> when was Musa the last time you posted? Breed. <laughs> May Allah bless him. He's a brother, mashallah. I mean, but yeah. I definitely, you know, would love to see more material, bro. More consistency. Allah make whatever obstacles that are easy for you guys. I mean. um, but definitely, you and Subur are old school. And definitely, you guys that don't know, you guys need to know. And by the end of this podcast. You are definitely maybe going to know. Inshallah. No. Definitely going to know. Inshallah. Whatever Zishan intends. That's what I'm saying, bro. All right. So we've got Hamza Sotsis. We've spoken to Subur. We've spoken to a few other people. But considering your thing is atheism, bro. Yeah. We want to get deep into atheism, bro. We want to decla- we want to declassify it. We want to deconstruct it. That we- looks like something else. I, I was trying to tear yeah. it open, but I can't. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll tear we'll we'll tear some things we'll open. We'll tear some yeah. things open de- definitely. Yeah. And what we want to tear open, bro, is let's just say a person is atheist. Let's dig a little deeper. Or as yeah. Rafiki said in Lion King, look harder. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be looking harder. Uh, I didn't look harder. Right. Look harder. All right, bro. Yeah. Let's let's jump straight into this. Yeah. What are the implications, mate, of atheism? <clears throat> yeah. Like, what does it actually do? Like, I know atheism is a big word. Yeah. For some of the audience. Yeah. We struggle with day-to-day vernacular. Yeah. So, I mean. W- what does it do? Okay, good. I think you've hit a very important point. Oh, thank you, bro. For once on oh, your podcast. That's, um, that's my only, probably bro. my only attempt to take a dig at him <laughs> without making things worse for myself. Um, but yeah, um, so. Sorry, so I don't. Is it, is it working? I think so. I don't know. That, is Hello? it? Is it work? Is it, where's this going now? Is it working, though? It should be working. Yes, yeah, working. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's working. Um, so yeah, atheism. Uh, I think it's good. One thing you mentioned, which is to define what atheism means, because sometimes we and we were discussing this earlier as well, is that we put all atheists in the same basket. And normally, when we <coughs> come across or seem to come across quite aggressive towards atheists, which we're not trying to do, uh, it's only addressing certain a certain demographic of atheists, not all atheists. Yeah, like we we think, oh, this guy doesn't believe. Oh, brother, you must believe. You know, everything yeah. has purpose. You have purpose. Yeah. I have purpose. It all has purpose. But believe. Say, Ashhadu la ilaha What? I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. But, but the academics are like, what are these? It's a brainwashed yeah. mugs. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> mugs. Yeah. The lot of them. Yeah. Not not the lot of them. Brown. Uh, they need to go back home, mate. You're Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> are you one of the Muslims? <laughs> yes, I th- there can be a barrier, bro. Sometimes, you know, there, there can be a barrier. Unfortunately, among some people, you know. But I think most most atheists are not. Uh, I'm not saying you're insinuating this, but I wouldn't say most a- most atheists are racist in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, some are. Yeah, yeah. some maybe. Some Muslims could be racist too. Unfortunately, some mo- Muslims are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think beyond that, beyond that, um, I know my my, my grandma is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> let's face it. Uh, well, it was, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. But anyway, um, so yeah, atheists, bro. Uh, there's there's different types of atheists. I would say majority of atheists are not the sort of new atheists, the aggressive atheists who has an agenda against religion in general and Islam in particular. Okay. Um, most atheists are just nice guys. They're just looking for meaning and purpose in life. They want to figure things out. They want to just live like most people do, and they just associate themselves with the label and because you it's been see popularized. Them on YouTube with Richard Dawkins <coughs> because we look at Richard Dawkins, Chris yeah. Hitchens, thinking that's all atheists. No, they're a very small subgroup, maybe the top, you know, not even top, uh, the bottom two percent, I would say, of atheists. But the loudest, uh, the loudest, yeah, and and most people are sheep. It's sheep mentality. Most atheists just want to follow 
these individuals because they seem appealing. You know, the camera makes, uh, you know, makes people seem bigger than they are. Uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything there. Um, because you know, physically, mashallah, you are quite, you're, you're, a, you're a bit smaller than, than, than you look. Bro, is this on is camera? It, is it working, bro? I think it's working. Is it, do you wanna do you just, just check? Is it? It's working. Yeah, yeah. It's I work. think it's working. Yeah, bro. yeah, it's working. Yeah. So, so, so the point being that the the media, the television, mm. makes people look bigger than they are. So when it comes to Richard Dawkins and the Sam Harris's, it presents them as these leaders of atheism, you know. And they and and people, most people don't even really listen to or understand what they're saying. They just they're mugs. Wow, this guy's a professor. Yeah, just write mugs. This guy's a professor, and uh, you know, and I, I, I'm trying to adopt a philosophy where we, we're not so aggressive as we were towards That's atheists five, six years ago. Because yeah. I don't think it helps in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, but just you don't seem to think that at the moment. Um, hopefully, we could change that as we as we go. Let's let's um, open to change, bro. Inshallah. Um, so so yeah, the, 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 these guys are leading majority of people who call themselves atheists down a road, um, and it's unfortunate to be honest. They're not. They're, they're, and and this is where we this topic comes in today, bro, because. When it comes to the implications of atheism, I don't think most atheists think about this. And I don't think most people that are leaving religion or leaving or on the verge of leaving Islam think about this. Surely that's it. I don't believe in God, mate. I don't believe in God. That's it, mate. I don't want to believe in no spaghetti yeah. monster and all this stuff. I just want to believe. I don't, none of them, mate. I just want to live my life, mate. Evolution and all that. Yeah. Um, Surely there is no implication. What implication are you referring yes. to? So, so here's the thing. Let's put it this way. You know, whenever you follow a view, yeah, you have a way of life. It comes with implications. So, if you have a good diet, right, or you adopt this a diet, it's gonna have implications on your life, right? It's gonna mean you don't eat certain things. You eat certain things. You your health is gonna change in certain ways in relation to your diet. Right. All right, Iqbal. Let's get to the point. Yeah, you're the, kind of losing me a bit. Um, I, I was hoping. I was thinking you weren't getting the point, so I was trying to get get to the point no, no, by wait, let's, let's breaking not, it down a bit. Fine, no, but no, let's not do that. So yeah. I think you got the point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So let's get to the implications. So yeah. the implications of this, bro, is that when you say you're an atheist, yeah, what you're saying, if you really understand what you're saying, just get to the point. Yeah, is that there is no God. There is no yeah, creator. I got. I, I'm the one who said that bit, but what, uh, that's why I said they say there's no God. What does that imply? You know, I think I think the atheists that may watch this may may you may be making they, it a little difficult for them. <laughs> <laughs> they probably switched off long time ago. <laughs> okay, they, like, who's this bearded bloke, mate? He bearded needs to blokes. go back home. He's a Muslim. Oh God. Off. Let's just keep that to your to your analysis of your grandma. Keep it to that to that realm. What are you saying about my no, you, grandma? You said you said <laughs> I, I didn't say you. anything. I didn't say oh, anything. She's a really nice God for a woman. Bless her, may Allah bless her. I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, so implications. Implications, bro. Without with getting to god the point. God damn it, Iqbal. Just god damn it, man. <laughs> okay, look, the implications are this. Yeah. yeah. There is no God. There is no creator. Yeah. Therefore, everything that exists is yeah. a result of what? Chance. Chance. Good. What else? Um, random, unorganized, just unconscious matter. Yeah, especially if you're a naturalist and a materialist, right? This is one subgroup of atheists, which basically. When you say naturalist, I just think of just nude, nude beaches. Yeah, and that stuff. That's one form of naturalism, I guess. But we're talking about the sort of philosophical. How are you massaging your leg when you? Because I'm, I'm trying. This is my way of trying to. Get a point across which is bro, relatively simple, bro, but we've got kids watching, so please, you know, just keep it. Simple, I'm keeping yeah. it to my knees, bro. I'm just touching my knees. Why? My own knees. Just don't touch anything, please. Oh, you, you, just, you, uh, bro, implications. Okay, was, was <laughs> you should have thought about the implications of kissing my forehead and leaving a wet mat patch on my forehead. <laughs> Before God damn it, bro. I'm it's just gonna flip and hear about it the whole goddamn <laughs> podcast, bro. All right, so implications of atheism. Sorry, I spoiled it a bit. That's why I got the, spoiled my. Uh, got the. Wait. I wasn't the one combing my hair before the episode with a mirror. Bro, trust me, if it, if it looks off, it looks a bit. Are you happy with it? Yeah, uh, pretty much. Because yeah, trust me, if that's off, like you're going to be cheesed off at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll do. Yeah? Yeah, I'll do. Right. You look nice, man. Bro, Natural. when you're good, you're me. Yeah. Just just remember that next time you feel When you're down. good, you're Sean. <laughs> Brilliant. Implications, bro. Implications. So yeah. So look. No God, no purpose. It's all random. All random. It's all physical stuff. It's all matter in motion. 
there is no objective behind this matter and motion matter in motion matter in motion like yeah. moving matter it's, it's just atoms and molecules that have been whizzing around for okay. millions and millions of years randomly colliding into each I other gotcha, have, and and everything we see in the world today is a result of that if that's the case bro what does it mean to talk about purpose value meaning justice all of these concepts and ideas that we hold dear to ourselves as human beings but buddha said that these sorts of questions are useless a question of purpose and all that forget all that mate well he may have said that but i think most atheists still hold on to purpose and meaning and value and what's interesting but i was reading a book recently uh, by uh, john gray uh, he's what he's a he's an eminent philosopher british philosopher uh, means nothing to you obviously um but what he said may John mean Gray. something to to us today which is that in the in the very beginning of his book in the introduction he points out look when atheists let go of god right they need to find a alternative a substitute right and why because there is a need human beings have a need to find meaning and purpose in life they they can't do without it it's just this innate need that human beings have now when you deny god and you adopt atheism or naturalism then you're in this void now you don't know what me- you, your meaning is what your purpose is it is it means nothing there is no meaning or purpose john gray who's this john gray john gray is a philosopher he's okay. a he's a philosopher or he's a, a political philosopher i believe but he's also interested in other areas too um his book's very interesting it's called seven uh, types of atheism uh Smashed it. yeah it's, it's it's actually quite interesting uh, I thought there was only one one type like i don't believe in god mate bish bash bosh No this actually many types of atheism smashed yeah, many types of atheism so and and that's why it's good to know these things so we could be a bit more nuanced we don't okay. just put them in the same box can you just give us can you just give what us you, a what do you refer do- to Dawkins as earlier you said he was a a mug a mug yeah so we don't refer to all of them as mugs basically all right maybe a teacup i'll have to think about that one bro. We'll, we'll we'll come back to that all right yeah um going nice. back to the point so so look there's a void A few, right. a few types of atheists. If you just well, there's many. The so you have naturalists okay. and materialists, which are roughly the same. Which is that there's nothing beyond the physical. It's all physical. It's all matter, right? There's no, there's no metaphysic. There's no metaphysical realm. There's no spiritual realm. There's nothing beyond the physical. Then you have what you call mesotheists or mesotheists. I'm not sure how you say it. They, they are an atheists who have a hatred towards God. Smashed it. They, they just like. They hate God with a vengeance. They want to just refute the idea of God. Their blood pressure goes through the roof when they think of the idea of God, right? Um, then you have uh, other types of atheists which hold on to sort of a, a humanism, right? They're they're like humanists, you know. And they'll be, these these groups will bleed into each other to some degree, but these are sort of general. Those no, they don't take off things. They actually are, are more concerned about what's good for humanity as a whole, basically. Uh, in, in a nutshell, are they like? um global warming activists and stuff you will find them amongst them as well okay. right they will find them amongst them as well so you get these ty- there's loads of and you, then you get the general atheist who's just atheist by name but doesn't really care just wants to live yeah. so your your main thing is that the implication of no god for them is purpose no my so the point here is this the one first key point is if you follow through with the the view the hardline atheism that there is nothing beyond material some of the world and there is no god there is no creator and everything is an accident therefore you are an accident and everything about your life is an accident okay right and therefore all of these ideas such as having meaning and purpose and value and all of these things are meaningless yeah. they mean nothing where do you get these ideas from what do they even mean right so you're left with this void and emptiness right and to be honest if there are no principles there is nothing that governs you you know even morality comes into this too there is no objective moral anchor then anything really goes to be honest right Now the point here is this if you follow you said, oh you said objective moral anchor yeah what's what's the difference between objective and subjective subjective is when you think when you go by what you believe is you know right and wrong you well, just you, you determine it yourself yeah and you objective? think something objective is where there's an external anchor to what's right and wrong right so for example everyone would agree that killing an innocent child is wrong I well probably the wrong person to ask this question to. I mean there's certain governments that are okay with that sort of stuff. If you ask but I was look, go, putting aside the point what governments think if you have atheists in this room right now they say it's bad yeah. Yeah everyone it's a natural yeah. it's, it's just innate you don't have to think about it it's wrong yeah. right? But for you to say it's objectively wrong there has to be an external anchor that you're pegging your morality on. Otherwise it's just your subjective opinion. Why is it wrong? I just I just think it's wrong. You see. Okay. So you run into all of these problems. 
Now, if you follow through with atheism, you'll end up in, in two broad camps, really. You'll either become a nihilist or an absurdist. These are philosophical terms, right? Okay. A nihilist is basically someone who recognizes that there's no meaning or purpose in life. They just follow through the life. It's, uh, life is about nothing. Miserable. It's pointless. Miserable it's pointless, mugs. Yeah. Miserable individuals, yeah. Um, so if, if, if you fall into that camp, bro, then see, I'm losing my, I'm starting to lose my trouble. This has never happened to me before, subhanAllah. You said nihilists. Yeah. So nihilists, so when you, if you're a nihilist, you're basically, you, you acknowledge that there's it's no like meaning. A, yeah, miserable. It's, this life is about nothing. And this is why many philosophers write about, write about suicide. They say that's the most rational thing to do is to commit suicide. Because there's no meaning behind everything. And that's why there's a, literally an epidemic in countries like the US and you've got Scandinavian countries Absolutely. and also Europe as well. Absolutely. And the other type you said? Uh, is an absurdist. Absurdism is an... So what that position is basically uh, is that you recognize that life is meaningless and there's no purpose or value. But you continue to look for meaning and value and you continue to live. So it's that absurdity that you're living with now, which you know there's no value or meaning if you oh. hold, but still you keep, like a paradox. you still keep trying to find meaning and value because it's so intrinsic to the human condition, right? And a very, a, there's a famous philosopher who actually did this view is ascribed to, mainly a French philosopher from the 19th century. His name was uh, Albert Jack Camus. Cru Crusoe. No, no, Albert Camus. Crusoe. Huh? No, I don't know who Crusoe is, bro. Who was it? Who's that Crusoe guy? Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe. Is that Robinson Crusoe? No. You know, Albert. Pink Panther. Did it. I know Did Pink it. Panther. Yeah, I know Pink Panther. Yeah. Was Pink Panther an atheist? That's a good question. Can Let's you stick to the subject, Yeah, please? let's stick to the subject, yeah. yeah. You know this. Oh yeah, it's me that's detracting from <laughs> them going all over the place with Pink Panther and kissing for That's and That's what I'm saying. And grandmothers bro. to the party. You no, know, it's the first step is to admit the problem and then, yeah. you know, we can, we can, you know. Okay. Uh, get, so the uh, nihilist and the other thing is nihilist you and said absurdist, is a, okay. right? Now, so basically, with the position you'll end up with is life means nothing. You have two, you know, the 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 best thing you could do is just deal with it, and get on with it, right? And try to find your own meaning and value. And this, bro, is a very dark place to be for a human being, right? Because it just goes, like it's better than believing in some make believe thing. Well, is it? Let's let's think about that for a second. Because if life means nothing, there is no value, there is no purpose, there is no nothing to drive you. Why even be an atheist? What drives you to be an atheist? But they will say atheists, like the atheists that... Because isn't it true that... Forget seven different types of atheists. Yeah. Anyone can say, you know, I'm atheist, but I don't believe that bit. I believe that yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. I of believe course. I don't believe these two. Yeah. Like, uh, I think Sabah was talking with uh, Sabur, Aaron, yeah. Aaron Ra. Aaron Ra. And that guy... You remember Aaron Ra's know. name and you couldn't remember Sabur's name. No, but look, Sabah was speaking to Aaron Ra, yeah? yeah. And then there was like he couldn't even understand. He couldn't even answer questions of philosophy of science. Yeah, because he and didn't. he was getting cheesed off. He was like, "Oh God!" So We've actually did. I did an episode on Sabur on uh, epistemics, which is a little plug, uh, a podcast that I'm trying to run, which will inshallah be more than one episode, one video. Well, uh, let's see. Um, but know. yeah, he's done an ana analysis of that debate, and he goes into this, and he points out, look, Aaron Rod doesn't know the philosophy. Uh, he just does the science. He knows his stuff in science, but because mm. he doesn't understand, understand the philosophy, he makes a lot of errors and mistakes. Fair but yeah, going back to the point, I've been through a phase myself in my life where you can consider me to be an agnostic, someone who didn't care about God, the existence of God. I never denied God, but I didn't care. And I got to the point in my life, bro, where I would, I would walk down the street and I was battling this because I thought, okay, what's the point of living? I'm just here, I'm an accident, I'm going to die. Why should I live? Why should I wake up and brush my teeth in the morning? brother. The only you have no taqwa. The only reason I you share no this... You have no iman. You need to pray the swala. See, if I was you worried... You read the Quran. If I was worried about uncles like you putting me, bashing <laughs> me down, bro. You know, I wouldn't share this. But I think it will be beneficial to people that... Uh, your iman was weak, brother. So, bro, that, that's uh, clearly something wrong with your iman, brother. It was, it was at the time, yeah. I didn't know anything. I didn't know much about Islam. Okay. And there's so many people in my boat, bro. And you're probably offending a lot of people that were in my position right now. No, but I was hoping you're going to defend it by saying, you know what? That's, that doesn't really indicate weakness of Iman. Sometimes it could be a person's circumstance or something that. Some, no, it something can. It can. It could be both. Through. But I think it's irrelevant. I think the key thing here is people will go through phases. Muslims go through phases too. And I went through a phase where, and because of the lack of knowledge I had and the connection I had with Allah, and I didn't really care. I was brought up in a very it. secular type of environment, uh, typical Pakistani environment. You know, and I'm sure you know much about that. Del, too. Del. There you go. Del, Del, Pakistan. Pakistan's playing today, India, you know that. Yeah, but by the time the podcast goes out, we would have lost by then. Let's see what happens, inshallah. 
Yeah. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Inshallah. Well, I mean, you shouldn't have said that, bro. I'm gonna leave that in, and then you can leave learn. that in, bro. I watch cricket. I don't watch football. I watch cricket. Don't say cricket, bro. You're offending a lot of Asians. It's pronounced. Asians pronounce it cricket. I was thinking you say cricket. 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 I'm cricket. They can. Cricket. Cricket. Try. Cricket. Cricket. There we go, bro. Like You're nearly yeah? there, bro. Inshallah, You're nearly there, bro. On Zishan's level of pronunciation. Uh, let's not go that far, uh, but close know, enough. We're, we're, hopefully, inshallah, we're, we're, get in we're there. Progressing. Get in there. Okay, Let, let's jump back on this point. It'd yeah. be interesting for you to give a few points. Maybe we leave this at the end where you can yeah. give uh, from your own experience. But um, the real options. What are the real options for someone who calls himself atheist? Let's let's dig a little deeper now. We're we're halfway. Yeah, I think we're halfway. Let's let's get a bit deeper. So so I think it relates. So I got to the point where I realized what's my options. Yeah, right. I thought, hold on a second. If I keep living with the way I'm living and, and holding on to the beliefs and thoughts and that I'm holding on to, the only real options are you recognize that your worldview is flawed or the way of life you're holding on to is flawed and you need to look for alternatives, or you maintain your worldview and you just live with that absurd reality, man. You just deal with it. Right? And that's what people like Dawkins will tell you to do Oh we are brave enough to deal with this We'll just have to be brave enough and carry on living right? So those are the two real options you have But I really believe bro That the human being, the way we feel That's a sign right? The fact that When someone says to you You don't have meaning or purpose or value in your life And you're like deep down inside You're like hold on a sec What the hell are you talking about? But you wouldn't believe in something just for the sake of it, just to protect you from a certain feeling that you'd have. Of course, but then again, most of the things we believe as human beings is based on intuition and feeling, bro. We go with what we feel. Yes, we engage in rational... Christians feel that Jesus is God. Yeah. And Hindus believe Ganesh, you know, the elephant God is... is Absolutely. Is, is God. Absolutely. So they believe in their intuition. So Well, I, I would say the intuition probably is more so that there is a God. And then the conception of God is based on whatever they've been taught. Okay. And then they then they they mm. worship, worshiping God is again something natural. And worship is something natural. Every human being so has a tendency. Conception is something that's taught. Yeah, conceptions are taught, right? So, I mean, take a child and put him on a desert island. Would he would he end up growing up believing in the concept of the Trinity naturally? I, w- I would argue he wouldn't. He may grow up believing that there is a cause to the universe. There's a creator. There's something there. What, by the way, some research is suggesting, people like Justin O'Barra and Oliver Petrovich, uh, but to end up with a specific concept of a god, such as that there is a god for money and there's a god for, you know, for food and there's a god for X, Y, and Z, I don't think they would end up with these type of conceptions of, of God. Um, but that's a different topic. I think if you recognize, so for example, if you feel, say you're doing exercise, for example, yeah. Which you obviously don't do much of, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, uh, I take that on the chin. Say, say you're doing exercise, but I'm sure you've tried, right? Say you're doing a set of reps on bicep curls, yeah? When you start feeling that pain, what do you do? Did you, what do I, you just stop, isn't it? You stop, right? It's, it's a sign for you that, okay, you're pushing yourself. You may push a bit beyond the pain, but then you're like, okay, if I do any more, I'm going to tear something. Yeah. So it's a sign for you to stop. The same way when it comes to this subject that we're talking about, when your worldview makes you feel a certain way, oh, I have meaning, I have purpose. What do you mean I'm just an arrangement of atoms? I'm just a brain, I'm just matter. I'm not that, I'm more than that. That feeling is a sign for you to stop and check your position and reevaluate. And you know, it's powerful, bro. Allah says in the Quran, you know, that those that turn away from his remembrance will have a very difficult, depressed life. Maishatan donka. Even the word, say, say, just say the word donka. Donka. See what yeah, happens to the dunk, back of your throat. Yeah, dunk. Dunk. It's like you're all suck. And that's a beautiful thing yeah. about yeah, you're choking literally even dunk. in the in the way you pronounce the word. Dunk. Yeah. yeah. So you it mean it's, it it hasn't it, it makes you realize, Panla, that and well the, aside the, besides the point that the word itself and the way it sounds and the way it's articulated from the from the, from the vocal cords, you get the feeling it, it adds to the meaning of the word. But Allah makes it clear you will have a difficult, depressed life. Ibn Kathir, when he when he comments on this particular verse, he he highlights that this type of person could have everything in the world, but he will still feel like something is missing. It's interesting you say that because I mean I'm not saying that this can be plastered on all atheists, but I mean Christopher Hitchens, he was you know yeah. very uh, close with the old whiskey bottle as well. Yeah, and a lot of these guys do admit that. I mean there is. I mean, what drives you in the morning to get up? 
I mean, if you, everything's going to become dust, what drives you to look after the, the, the planet Earth? What drives yeah. you to have affection with your kids if you just know that, you know, we're all, like you said, part motion, particles in motion? We're an accident. According to them, we're an accident. But okay, so that that's one main implication that yeah. you're, you're driving. Are there any other implications apart from lack of purpose, lack yeah. of direction, depression? Yeah. I Bro, I think, I think it's a significant one. And it's one that's kept in the closet. They don't really talk about much. Right? You wouldn't hear atheists go into this topic and discuss this much because it's such a big problem. right? It's such a huge problem. And I, and I really believe much of, not all, but much of people, people that go through sort of existential crises and a lot of depression is related to meaning and purpose. Right? Okay, so let's just... Uh, I'll give you an example. A okay. uh, book recently written by an individual called Ali Rizvi, uh, ex-Muslim, ex-Shia Muslim. Uh, he wrote a book called The Atheist Muslim, right? And in it, he gives an example where when people leave faith, leave Islam, they go through a crisis, right? They, he gave even cites examples of a, of a guy hanging himself off a tree, right? And that's the extreme, but this happens because you, you human beings are not designed to thrive off this idea that we're here and we're in an accident. We're designed to thrive off Tawheed and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you don't do that, you will suffer. Just get... Yeah, hang on, hang on for three years, isn't it? Yeah, you can. That can happen, and that's that's serious, bro. As far if, mm. if we're going to talk about implications, I would say that is more than enough for people to really reconsider such worldviews and ide- ideologies, you know. And there are other implications, such as you don't have an account for morality anymore. Yeah, you you don't have an account for you're even. Your what does that mean, though? If a person doesn't have account for morality, what does that imply for wider society? It's a, it's dangerous, bro. How so? It's dangerous. I think uh, there was a, philosopher, uh, a recent philosopher of the 20th century, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, if I'm not mistaken. He said something. Say, what? Jean-Paul Sartre. 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 I think, I think, I think Sartre. I think, I think that's how you say it. He said something. He, his whole thing was, going off this whole nihilistic outlook on life, he said, look, he was afraid about the freedom that would result from such a worldview. And it was an interesting take. Frank Sinatra said that. Yeah. No, no. Jean-Paul uh, Sartre. Okay, not Frank Sinatra. Uh, potato, um, potato. Yeah, same thing. As long as you get the point, that's what's important. Not who said it, but what was it? I haven't got the point now either, bro. So, the, well, his thing was, bro, that if it's all random, there is no meaning or purpose behind everything. There is no creator God, you know, that's going to dictate and tell you what what's right and what's wrong. Then you have this immense amount of freedom. Do what you can do, whatever you want. Anything goes. Now you can imagine if you follow through with that type of thinking, anything goes mentality. What that would mean for what that can potentially mean for society. But a lot of people, in. like in the UK, like over fifty percent, they're saying they're not Christian anymore. Yeah. Um, we can see the, the the moral and and social degradation of society in the world that we live in. Materially, the d- people are doing well, right? From a technological perspective, people have a, we're advancing. Well, apart from depression, what what really is not going well? Well, look at the look. Uh, take take certain social realities such as the mm-hmm. breakdown of families. You know the the families are still together. Like, what's, what do you mean? Well, they, we don't have the family structures dissolving now as well, bro. People don't like care what? about. Look at the amount of people that are being uh, elderly people that have been sent to old age homes. Well, you know, so someone dispar- can argue that there's better facilities in place. Yeah, but my question, the 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 point here isn't that there's better facilities in place. The point here is, why would you you know take someone that's taken care of you all of your life, and just resign him to a care home? Because they need better care and better support. But what about that emotional care and emotional support they would they would want from a son or a daughter? Okay, you know, and, and and more about your mindset. Mm. How can you you know do that? Someone that's given you everything you have in your life and taken care of you and made you who you are today, and you just chuck them into an old age. Yeah. That's one example, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that so that family structure is breaking down. People are becoming very individualistic. Are they? Well, they are. Look at. Uh, I'll give you. See, I don't think atheism is in isolation. Yeah. Right? Normally we bang on about you know this atheist worldview. Why is, and this is another interesting question, bro. Why is atheism supposedly on the rise if it's such a flawed worldview and it has so many problems and has so many flaws? Mm. That's something that someone can ask. You yeah. just point out here's a big flaw that it can't give you account so, so for why is purpose. It then? I believe it's tied in with other things in in, in the world that we live in today. Yeah. I believe it sort of it supports materialism. It supports consumerism. It supports the capitalist uh, consumerism, system. capitalism. That's something that's pushed by obviously the governments. They, yeah. they make think about it this way, Zishan. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the capitalist high five outlook on life, yeah, it's no time for a high five. Though. Yeah, it isn't, bro. It's a very, very scary thing. That's what you think I'm about. saying. I'm like, why is he doing that randomly? 
you you went for it first so I just support it bro if you I'm not going to leave you hanging bro okay alhamdulillah See, this, the, the, this is this is something that Islam gives is brotherhood you don't leave each other can hanging. you just stick with the point <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick with the point bro okay going back to the point I'm just um, joking bro so look uh, cap- what's capitalism all about it's just about making the rich richer and yeah. the poor poorer the competition to outdo mm, each yeah. other regardless of what's happening on the ground yeah on the grassroots more money, about, more money yeah, exactly so th- to drive that you need to create this need within society for the product right you have to build consumers how do you get consumers you have to sell them the vision you have to sell them the mater- materialism right do you think it's being pushed by the government and the powers that be atheism i believe there are certain individuals um, who are pulling the strings to whatever extent extent they are which is facilitating this whole system because look atheism is just a piece in the machinery right think and i'll tell you why, what the link here is it's this when you disconnect the human being from god there is a void there is an emptiness as we've discussed in this yeah. podcast because that void and emptiness is there the human being will now be like fish out of water he's flipping around trying to find something to replace the emptiness with the easiest thing to replace it with is what's right in front of you mm. here comes the the dream for the capitalist to show them the material world sell them the dunya sell them the world right you need this you need to buy this product you need to invest in this you need to get this you need to get that you need to buy this car x y and z right and what this does is that people now start running off these material things and sa- temporarily it satisfies them but in the long run it doesn't you buy a new car bro that's where the pharmaceuticals benefit from that Absolutely. as well just tablets yeah. depression tablets yeah. you you say so you buy and what happens bro look at the, the rich and the affluent they buy a new car a few weeks later it's just a car they want to buy another car they want to buy another car and this adds to you know this supports their agenda of keeping these people in the loop of buying consuming constantly you know fine he's got another car a few weeks later let's just get, advertise him another car you know so, i have a phone i have an iphone how many how many times does the iphone produce a new phone in you know, every year almost yeah, right yeah every year my iphone 8 plus is working just fine apparently now now there was upgrades that come come that 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 basically slow the phone down and create the need right well excuse me bro if we're not using the fancy phones that you're using bro flip sorry bro i forgot you were still on the 30 to 10 flex um but yeah so look here's a, and 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 i think it's very interesting from that perspective that there is a tie in with all these things and and if, if we go back to the quran surah surah uh, surah kaf very interesting story the entire surah is about i believe materialism it so sort of draws the draws our attention to the traps of this material world okay right? interesting uh, and the scholars have mentioned this too and 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 this is surah that was i st- I've studied recently and I've really paid attention to because I think there's some very deep lessons and we know the prophet sallam told us that m- at least memorizing the first and the last part of the surah is protection against the jahl subhanallah right and now the jahl is not the, a good bloke no of course and he's going to incline people to the material when he comes. class a mug right? exactly and I would agree I would there you go touch on that bro finally I'll agree to the use of the term mug for once Uh, but we know right we know that he will incline people to the material dajjala the root the word itself is interesting because it also holds the meaning to take a, a cheap metal and to gild it with 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 something expensive like gold right so it's to gild a cheap metal with gold mm. now if you look at the dunya we know how lowly it is and allah tells us in the quran but it's almost been gl- gilded the glitz and glamour of the world has been presented yeah, yeah. and what's very interesting in that surah one of the stories is about the gardeners if you without going into too much detail but at one point the guy he goes to his garden and he looks around at his garden and he's like you know what i don't think this is going to go anywhere i don't think the day of judgment is going to come and here what's captured bro is a moment where we realize that attachment to the dunya will delude you of the hereafter and your creator so it's almost like a vicious cycle the more materialistic you become the more atheist you become in nature the more atheistic you become the more materialistic you become you said it's a cog in the big machine yeah who's pulling the strings who's who are these people i don't know who the people are specifically um obviously there's people that have have spoken about them in the past there are there are links that are made there's loads of documentaries and videos and stuff out there obviously a lot of this comes under the conspiracy type of tag tagline but i'm sure there's a lot i i really believe there's a lot of truth to this as well okay right okay. um I'm, i know you've covered some of this stuff in the past briefly yeah 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 but a lot of people you're right they do this you know just um, despise them say nah it comes they just put under the word conspiracy yeah. in fact this term conspiracy was actually coined at the yeah. time of uh 
John F. Kennedy's death, right. uh, it was actually pushed forward to kind of just discredit any theories or whatnot. So, yeah, I'm I'm glad, bro, that. And, and to be to be fair, I I do think the atheistic agenda does fit in with anybody that's pulling strings. And we know there are powers that be that want to increase their power or Absolutely. whatnot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's important to realize that atheism is not in va- in a vacuum. It's not, it's not just this entity that just exists in and of itself. Because if you really analyze atheism in and of itself, you see how weak it is as a worldview, as a position. It can't make sense of anything, right? Not even life. Mm. So I believe it's been driven by other things. So it fits into the system and then the whole system works together. You know, and it self-sustains itself. And it's unfortunate because people, you know, and people have been kept away from this whole idea of, of, of what's coming after life. You know, death is something that's not spoken about. All right, bro. So we've spoken about Frank Sinatra, about Pink Panther, about kissing people on the forehead. Yep. Let's let's now speak about more serious things. Yeah. Yeah. So last for for the last segment now, you've been bashing atheists left, right, and center. No shame whatsoever. Just destroying them. Just roasting them. Just shunting them. Now, mate, give them a solution. Yeah. Give them a solution. Talk a bit about a, a bit about when you were in that zone yeah. and what helped you and practically because you can't just say, mate, it's gonna make you depressed if you're an atheist. You gotta give him something yeah. practical. Give him some steps, mate. Let's 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 do this. Yeah. So practically, first point of action, I guess, is to realize something isn't adding up. That's something that the individual would, would do themselves, right? This is something to be recognized, you know, throughout history that these positions don't give you as far as anything from a from a meaning perspective okay, so listen life. listen to listen thyself. to yourself listen to yourself right okay. stop listening to the dawkins and the harrises and, and the just frank just sinatra's and yeah all of the them pink panthers that's, all of them yeah yeah i don't think pink panther spoke did he that's a very good point bro yeah. that's the, the most important point you've made on the entire podcast <laughs> okay yeah so um Bro, you need to get into Speaker's Corner, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> You'll be dynamite, bro. Speaker's <laughs> Corner, I'm telling you. It's fine. Like, okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so look, the first thing is listen to your gut, right? Yeah. And the second thing is, look, use the faculties you've been blessed with of reason and, and rationality and intuition, you know, and all of these faculties you have as a human being and just keep searching and keep looking. Now, I believe and we believe Islam is the solution. What? Yeah, and here's the thing, bro. Again, the powers that be have painted Islam in such a way that the so- only solution to the problems of humanity has been shown as the enemy. Yeah. Therefore, Ooh. as soon as you're now looking for a solution, you're shining a torchlight into the sort of realm of solutions, yeah. and you're coming across our oh, Christianity, you know, X Y X way, Y way, oh Islam, forget Islam. Yeah, you're not yeah. even going to look at it, yeah, right? You're not yeah. even going to pay attention to Islam, right? And that's unfortunate because, and the way it's done is, oh look, here's a thing in Islam, you know, it, tells, it says do this or X Y Z is torture this person, do this person, misunderstand misrepresentations anyway, mm. right? But what's been covered is the essence of Islam, which is the underlying philosophy of Islam. Which is the solution, which is what? God created the human being with a very clear definitive purpose, which is to know Allah, to God, Allah meaning God, and to worship Him. Right? And it's through the worship and submission to your Creator that you will find who you are and you will find peace and tranquility in this life. Right? That is the solution. That is the answer. Right? So and, and the need to worship is there within every single human being. That you everyone find yourself themselves. when you find God. Yeah, Allah says, don't be like those who, who, who turned away from the remembrance of Allah and Allah made them forget themselves. All right, so mate. So, Allah and Allah made so you said themselves. Islam, yeah? So what makes Islam stand out from the other religions? Like for someone watching, they're like, all right, let's, let's see about Islam. Like, what's the deal? Or mm. well, somebody might be a bit 50-50. Yeah. There's loads of religions out there, mate. Yeah. Loads of religions. Yeah. What makes Islam the right religion, mate? It's proper confusing, mate. Give us the litmus test. I think the first thing someone needs to do is read a good translation of the Quran. Okay. Right, a good translation. Right? Oh. I would recommend Abdul Halim's translation uh, by Oxford Press or Dr. Mustafa Khattab's translation, which is the clear Quran. Okay. Uh, read a good translation because one thing would happen. The Quran, as some of the scholars pointed out, the verses, the ayat of the Quran are in line with human nature. They speak to the fitra, okay. the, the human nature, the self. So when someone reads, for example, Surah Ikhlas, the 112th chapter. It will resonate with the spirit. 
and and there will be an there will be this acknowledgement that will take place within the human being, which will be far beyond any rational conviction. All right, right? number one, number one, and it is it is a type of reason in itself, right? Okay. So number one, read the Quran, read the fundamental message of the Quran, and it will it will resonate with the human soul. Okay. Right. Number two, when you read the Quran, you will see that there is a for a book that's revealed over twenty three years. That's yeah. older than some people have been alive. You're joining it with point number one because it links in. It links in. Okay. Right. It links in. A book that's revealed over twenty three years. You will when you read the Quran. You will when you read it. You will think that it's been it's been it's been written in probably one day, mm. and it's been double, triple checked just to make sure for consistencies. Yeah. It is the most consistent book I would say on the face of this earth. When you say consistent, what do you mean? Consistent. Take for example, as far as its core fundamental message of who God is is concerned. There is consistency. There is there is nothing that will be that will go against. You know, you won't read in one part of the Quran that God is one, and in another part that God is three or four. Okay, in that right? sense, it's consistent with His doctrine. Okay, with eternally, doctrine. completely consistent, right? Okay. Third thing I would say. But is, what was the second thing, though? So the second thing is the consistency of the Quran. When you read it, you will recognize. So it's a it. consistent. Book. And I think there's 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 an element of a, of a miracle here as well, which is that a book that's revealed over twenty three years. There were no editing processes at the time. There were no computers where you could sit down and and you know sift through and reread and change X Y Z. It was or an oral revelation. Book. Okay. It was orally revealed, written down later, right? That fact, twenty three years, and yet the message. And remember, most of the verses were coming down addressing certain situations that were unfolding at the time, right? It wasn't that just revelation for the sake of revelation. It yeah. was addressing situations. Yet there is a beautiful consistency and coherence in the Quran as far okay. as his message is concerned. All right, number right? three. Number two. Number three. Uh, I would say is the impact, and this is something experiential. Going back to the point of the sugar I mentioned, and I can mention 101 things, bro. But I think the, these are the things that really matter. Okay. When you taste Islam and you start to experience it for yourself, we're all experiential as human beings. We go by experience. If something feels good, we go with it. That's what right? I'm saying. You gonna go on a good diet? It feels good, like you said earlier. You go with it. You stick to it, right? That's it. Yeah. You're not gonna eat broccoli and tuna, and if it makes you collapse and say, "I'm gonna stick to broccoli and tuna." That's what I'm right? saying. Yeah. So you, it's it's experience, bro. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. So you taste it for yourself. Taste it for yourself, and you will know if you are sincere. You will know it's the truth, right? Okay. Um, so experience it. But practical things like, all right, he's talking about experience. You're reading the yeah. book. All right, give us some solid proofs, mate. Give us proof. Yeah, there's a God, mate. Where's the proof, mate? I don't see God. So, I don't. So, none so, of that. So mate. here's the thing, bro. I think there's something else needs to be clarified here. Yeah. Is that unfortunately we live in a world yeah. which has been the the framework that's been constructed of thinking is seeing is believing. Yeah. That's what we're taught in our educational that's institutions. That's how we're taught to think. That's how uh -huh. we're taught to you know come to conclusions and beliefs. If you really understand how we come to truth, there's many routes to knowledge. It's not only empiricism. It's not only seeing is believing. Is right? that what empiricism is? Yeah, it's seeing it's it's, it's the scientific method. It's like okay, you can see something, you can observe it, therefore it exists. If you okay. can't see and observe it, therefore it doesn't exist. Okay, that's not true, right? There's testimony, there's intuition, there's experience. There's a whole lot of other other means through knowledge. There's reason and rationality. Just a lot of reason. stuff we learn from testimony, yeah. isn't it? Science is based on testimony. A lot of our textbooks and geography facts and yeah. animal facts. Absolutely, most. Look, I always ask this question to atheists: Do you believe your mother is your mother? That's a bit rude, bro. Well, do you believe your? Why are you? Why are you? Uh, do you believe your 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 dear mother. mother is your mother? Yeah, that's bad, bro. Your beloved dear mother is your mother. Are right, you going a bit over the top now? Okay, but, but you get the point. Everyone yeah. believes their mother is their mother. Yeah, yeah. How many of them have done a DNA test? Smashed it. It's testimony, isn't yeah. it? Oh, I can do a DNA test. Yeah, but that's a potential. Yeah. Right now you believe in your mother Not based on a potential test you can belief, do Blind belief yeah, It's not blind It's based on testimony Authentic okay. testimony of your mother Of your father Of your siblings X, Of y, the Z. doctor yeah. yeah Scientists doing si research in science is based, what is it, You're basing your work on previous scientists And Dr. John Gray Dr. John Gray Okay who, who's John Gray? The guy you told me at the start Philosopher Yeah, yeah sorry yeah. He's a philosopher Maybe a doctor as well yeah. That's what I'm saying bro I thought you were trying to catch me out again. No, 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 no. But I already did catch you out. Catch could call me out more than enough times, man, today. <laughs> anyway, yeah, hopefully hopefully that look, it gives people food for thought what we've talked about today. Okay. Uh, so you want to give them just uh, just a bit of a taster. Yeah. You do have videos where you, you, you've gone into these things with a bit more depth than you've given us. Yeah, we're we're putting out new content. There's a new show that we're putting out called Epistemics. It's like one episode a decade. At the or? moment, there's one episode which came out last week. The next one's out next Wednesday, inshallah. By the time you release the next one, everything would probably be in VR, isn't it? I'll probably be all grey by then. And <laughs> John, John Gray, yeah. John Gray, you, yeah. You can be Iqbal Gray. Iqbal Gray. 
एक बाल ग्रे वन हेयर एंड इवन दस ग्रे ओके चौक it's went over you isn't it yeah, over the hair follicles that's what i'm saying all right okay. bro give us some uh, where we've we've got we've got some juicy few minutes at the end bro i want to hear some of your best um speakers corner arguments that even you were like yo they they hit the sweet spot that you can arm us with the people that are watching and they're like look this podcast has been dead i mean i mean why did it even happen it just seemed pretty pointless useless at sometimes yeah. let's give them let's give our loyal fans something at the end that they will be like yo ikbal has really come prepared but you know it's it's uh, ikbal is a genius i know but That's can you topic. can you just yeah can you just <laughs> okay so so look practical stuff bro first and foremost i would say that solid arguments bro. don't hit me but but his thing let me give you some <laughs> let me give you let me give you a premise, uh, 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 a foundational point that we need to understand about arguments okay we shouldn't argue with people for the sake of arguing Right, arguments are there as a means to awaken the truth within people. Unfortunately, sometimes we just argue with people just to win the argument. Yeah, yeah. we don't care about the internal state of where they go. Right, that's true. I was in that boat as well. You, I think the video you were referring to was with an atheist in speaker's corner, where he got stuck on the point of logic and 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 reason. He smashed um, it, mate. Although I did make many mistakes in that video, which I know of and most people don't know. Of. Yeah, you smashed it. Uh, uh, give us some juice. So, 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 so juice. First thing is this: I would well, say the juice that helped you when you were agnostic, just whatever, mate. I would say really get the atheist to think about what it means for them to call themselves atheist, right? Okay. So to talk about mention some of the things we mentioned in this podcast, such as what is what's the purpose of your life? Where do you get purpose from? Where's the value? Where's the meaning? Right? For example, what's the difference between you, uh, dear atheist, and this bottle of water? This is arrangement of atoms and molecules. You are an arrangement of atoms. If and he's molecules. like, all right, cool. You come up with a deadly point. Yeah. All right. Why should I believe in God? What are you gonna say? Okay, good. So just to satisfy his rational craving, you can you can give him give him the Quranic argument for God's existence. Which Allah is, says in the th- uh, in the fifty second chapter, verse thirty five and thirty six. Were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? So we were created from nothing. But out of nothing, nothing comes. They say, well, at the moment, you know what they say. Like yeah. uh, science hasn't reached there yet, but we know Big Bang and there was like a nebula. Yeah, or but then you have to remind them that science is just based on the observable. Anything beyond the physical universe, they can't tell you about anyway, right? So they, sometimes they play with words and try to confuse you. But no, just really dig a, dig a bit deeper. Know that you have the truth. Whatever. The, if you don't understand something someone is saying, don't feel it a point to just oh my god, he knows what he's talking about. I don't know my stuff. Ask them. Right, the cure to ignorance is to ask and learn. Right? Mm. So ask them genuinely. So look, I don't understand what you're saying. Tell me what you're talking about. Right, and then when they start to ex- explore a bit, they'll probably re- you'll probably realize they don't know what they're talking about themselves. Yeah. So ask them. How can something come from nothing? Out of nothing, nothing comes. Right. That's a very reasonable point. Could you create yourself or make yourself? Of course not. Because to create yourself, you have to already exist. No, about God though. Well, why are you assuming God is created? That's your assumption. Right, we believe in an uncreated creator who doesn't have a beginning. Don't you? But you got evil and everything. And why would God allow e- all this evil? Well, that's a whole other topic in it, itself. It, it we'll exists. be here for another two hours if you want. But how would you? How would? What's, so, the, what's so the, the bullet? What's thing, the silver bullet? The, the, the silver bullet is this. The most, the biggest bullet, right? Is this? So the biggest bullet is this. Yeah. Even if the problem of evil exists, it doesn't mean there is no God. But it means that the God is not merciful, as yeah, we but, keep claiming. But you were de- trying to deny God based on the problem of evil. So at least acknowledge it doesn't deny God's existence. It's not an argument against God's existence. Okay, interesting. So let's come through the door first, right? Interesting. The, the only thing the problem yeah, of evil yeah, could yeah, do yeah. is give you the misunderstanding of who God is, that there, God mm. is evil, right? It doesn't deny God's existence. God. Yeah. yeah, there is a God. Wow. And then you can, and then bro, it's a, it's a very beautiful, in our tradition, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is from, better than your pink panther point. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Yeah, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you know, the amazing is the condition of the believer. When something good happens, I'm paraphrasing. When something good happens to him, he's grateful, and when something, a, a trial or affliction afflicts him, he's patient. Right? Mm. We realize that life is a test. Right? We will be tested. Allah tells us with the loss of life and wealth and and etc. Right? We'll be tested with these things. We're not in paradise. See, the atheist approaches you the problem of evil, assuming this life is supposed to be paradise. Smashed it. It's not. We're here to be tested, right? Also, another point you can make is how do we grow as human beings? It's through facing resistance. Whenever you've gone through a hard time in your life and you come out the other side, you become you become a better person, a more useful person. Yes. Going back to your beautiful point you made about the seedling under the soil, 
Maybe you want to share it again. I love that point. That's an Iqbal moment right there. That's a, that's a Dobal moment there. That's a that's a full head of hair moment. That's there, uh, that's somewhere that none of us uh, yeah, fit, fit a, in that car- yeah, ca- category. Yeah, but I th- I think that was a very profound point, bro. Yeah. It's that the seed is put through manure and darkness and twigs and stuff, and yeah. it grows. And only when it grows, do does it flower, and we benefit from it. Absolutely, yeah. And and this is the thing: you grow through trials and tribulations. Also, how could we appreciate what good is and courage is if we didn't see the opposite of these things? So, right. what helped you when you were an agnostic? It was that crisis. I couldn't live with that dissonance inside me. Okay. That hold on, that pain, the anxiety of thinking that you were just this accident that's gonna die. I had to find answers. But maybe that pain was just biryani just lodged, you but, know, like in one of the, or just indigestion. But, How can you know that pain was? Biryani doesn't lodge for months and years, bro. Biryani just passes through you eventually after twenty four hours, twenty eight hours. Yeah. It can do, yeah. Rough. Depending on how much chaat masala you put in that, Smashed put it. in that thing, man. You've gone chaat masala on yeah. me now, bro. Yeah, chaat masala, bro. You've gone full fledged. Oh, Pakistani chaat, chaat masala is the thing, bro. Magic bro, ingredient. You have taken us on a a dirt road of atheism, bro. Normally, people go through a generic path, yeah. ask generic questions. Quite quick, yeah. Could you, could you? Yeah, exactly. Generic questions. We've taken a different route. Yeah. And we've explored much more on this uncharted territory yeah. known as atheism. Can I just make one point? Of course on you that. can. I think if we were to summarize everything, what, one of the things I'm trying to say is the atheist, if he really thinks about his position, he's not even in the position to challenge God's existence. He's not even in that position. No? Because as soon as you deny God, you can't make sense of anything. Mm. So you're starting with this huge negative, this vacuum. Yeah. Right, so you even your ability to reason, how do you account for it? Mm. You know, so I would say the atheist, if he really thinks about his position, he's not even in the position to challenge God's existence. Smashed. It. Yeah, so it's something to think about. You know. Wow. Paradigm shift stuff. That really is a dirt road moment, bro. We've come across so much through that dirt road that people on the I'm highway. Not, I'm not really is. appreciating your adjectives, but um, no, it's, bro. It's, when you the make dirt road, all right. We made our own path, our own dirt road. So yeah. we've come across entire ecosystems yeah. and biryani and Pink Panther on the way, and Frank Sinatra. Yeah, all of these guys. John Gray and massaging the leg, Don't yeah, kisses. And that's bro. We show affection, bro. That's it, bro. We show affection, but bro, Jazakallah. You've given the alternative. You've given us a lot of food for thought. Check the description. This guy uploads once every uh, decade or every blue moon. So check it out. Once every week now from now on, inshallah. No way. Inshallah. We're going to hold inshallah. you to it then, bro. Yeah, I'm saying it here live, inshallah. Yeah? Once every week, inshallah. So hit the bell icon on his page and do the same. Until next time, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. It's a wrap. Well, dealing with this guy is like worse than dealing with any atheist. Bro, you look red on the you look really red on the camera. <laughs>